Hello, good morning and welcome to Ankara, Turkey's lesser travelled capital city. I arrived here having transited in Istanbul at a Turk airport. I took a flight from Malaysia which was roughly 11 hours and then one hour or so flying to Ankara. To fly to Ankara from Malaysia it was only £180 if I transited and went to Ankara. If I flew directly to Istanbul on that same flight the cost of the ticket was £250. So I have no idea <laughs> why it was around £70 cheaper to come to Ankara first but it was. So I'm now here and like I mentioned not too many sights and attractions to see in this city that not many people come to and therefore I haven't seen any other non-Turkish people so far and added to that it's November it's much colder I've purchased a jacket as you can see and I'm wearing trousers because I'm no longer in Southeast Asia and things get much colder this time of year on this side of the world so I plan to travel around Turkey for around a month. I'm going to visit most of the big places and well-known uh, attractions in western Turkey. Um, I'm only going as far east as Cappadocia. So stay tuned for all the videos coming over the next month or so. And I'm going to begin with the Ankara sightseeing tour today. So without further ado, I'm going to head on to the metro and go to my first place. So I'm now here at Anit Kabir, which is by far the most popular place that people visit when they come to Ankara. That includes mainly Turkish uh, domestic tourists. And it's the monumental museum and mausoleum of Mustafa Ataturk, who was the founder of modern Turkey. Turkish people flocking here in their droves with flags and um, flowers, all kinds of things. And you can see how busy it is just trying to queue up to get in. <laughs> Having queued up, I'm now inside and there are masses and masses of people. I've just got a bit of space to talk right now, which is why I'm doing so. And one thing that's very clear is a sense of national pride here. It's like a festival. It seems like a special day. And yet I think this is a normal day here at Anik Kabir. And most of the people visiting are, you know, baby boomers and millennials. They're not particularly old people. There's a few old people here who may have been born just after his death. He died in the 1930s. Um, so it's kind of obvious how highly he is revered and received as most of these people were born after his death but still coming here like a pilgrimage site which is amazing. You can see the monument just there. Gonna get a bit closer and take some shots. So I'm now inside the main central square part of Anik Kabir and there are different museums and ceremonial courtyards around and I believe right here behind me is the actual mausoleum. I'm going to go inside and I am almost certain you're not allowed to film anything but you can see here this is where the entrance is and lots of flags and people taking pictures and an incredible atmosphere. I've just visited the tomb of Ataturk inside there and you go in and do a little loop. There isn't his body in a glass cabinet like Ho Chi Minh or um, Mao in Beijing. There's just a big tomb there and some flowers. Ataturk was 
really the father of modern Turkey as I mentioned earlier and I don't know that much about him as I've just arrived here and I'm still trying to learn things about the country. What I do know is that he galvanized the country at the end of World War I from the defeated Ottoman Empire and kept at bay the allied forces of Greece, Italy, Britain and France. He restored a sense of national pride and introduced liberal and modern ways of life to Turkey post Ottoman Empire. Having left Anit Kabir, I'm walking through the quiet, unassuming streets of Ankara here on a Sunday morning in November with this beautiful clear sky. This will give you a slight idea of what it would be like to live here in the city. Various apartment blocks which are not too shabby. So I've just left Anik Kabir and I took a taxi to reach Ankara Castle behind me. It's on a hilltop on the other side of the city and it cost me just 21 Turkish Lira from outside Anik Kabir and the taxi takes you up a lot of the steep walking that you would otherwise have to do. If you wanted to take the metro, the nearest metro station is quite far away and it would take you I think around 20 minutes according to Google Maps to get here from the nearest metro station. So up to you which one you want to take, a little bit more for a taxi but easier to reach here. A lot of interesting streets with character around these winding lanes on the hilltop. Some different souvenirs on sale. So you'll find a pretty buzzing bazaar inside the citadel's walls. Dates back as far as the 9th century AD. Really cool. You can see some of the castle behind me here now. All sorts of trinkets on sale as you make your way up higher. People using their environment <laughs> very cleverly to display some Turkish souvenirs. Some music playing behind me at the very top of the castle. I'm just about to get there. There's already some views emerging of Ankara. I'm told the castle has the best 360 views of the city.
an ancient castle. It's completely alive here inside the citadel. Really amazing. Really gives you that feeling you're in Turkey. Living up to the stereotype completely. There's people just climbing all over the walls here. I was warned when I read online that you have to be careful. <laughs> Fly there in my way. You have to be careful not to fall off because there is nothing to hold on to. And people have had accidents in the past, so be warned. Just a sheer drop around the edge. Immense views of Ankara from the top here. You can see how the city sprawls in all directions. <laughs> Distant hills and apartments as far as the eye can see. Leaving the citadel, but there's still a few more streets of interest around it, which I'm going to head down now. Idyllic old school cobbled street cafes. Take a look at this cafe. I've got Gols Leme Chestillary. <laughs> Pronunciation is probably so bad. It's essentially pancake. I've got eggplant in this one. I'm coming along with that some Turkish tea, which is quite bitter if you don't add sugar, from my experience. So I'm going to dig into this now and see what it tastes like. Mm, quite simple. You can order it with potato or cheese. Hey, what's up? It's now nighttime here in Ankara and I'm in the central area. I'm right by a street which has a lot of food and a lot of places to sit down and chill. And I'm just going to show you a point of view shot as I walk down there. I've been there a couple times already and I'm working my way to the most famous mosque in the city tonight. So the name of this street, if you want to visit, is Selenik Kadesi. As you can see, everyone's wrapped up in their big coats here in Turkey. <laughs> nice big flag. Loads of places to eat and choose from. A lot of them quite modern. One of the main advantages with traveling to Ankara is that everything is what the locals do. There are no menus in English, really, and there are no real tourists here eating. Hello. It's not designed, hey. It's not designed for tourists. So your experience is the same of a local, which gives you a more authentic Turkish experience if that's something you're looking for. If you're looking for tourism and a touristy experience, then 
You can find that in the coastal destinations of Turkey and in places of Istanbul. But Ankara offers you something different in that department. And you'll get to mix with all the Turkish no matter where you go. There won't be Westerners or Chinese sitting beside your table. So I've moved on and I'm now here at the biggest mosque in Turkey's capital. The, I'm gonna slaughter its name, Kocha Tepe. And I am in awe as I'm just panning my camera now for the grand reveal of its size and grandeur and how it's just sitting here. It's a quiet Sunday night, no one around. It's cold. Only people coming here are to go and pray. No one's coming here like me as a tourist. And it's fascinating as a traveler when you get to come to these sorts of places which are not touristy, having just been to Thailand, Vietnam, places like Siem Reap and Cambodia. Off the back of that, coming here and then finding something this incredible. And then I'm the only one here this time. It's a great feeling. And I'm gonna try and go inside. I'll film what I can. I'll do my best to be respectful as always. And here it is. Spectacular mosque here in Ankara. Wow, only got as far as that first clip you saw and then actually they turned the lights off because prayer had finished and I think they're actually closing the mosque. I'm not sure, but yeah, couldn't film any more than that. But you got an idea, you saw inside just how spectacular it was in this neoclassical Ottoman style. Wow, what a day it's been. I just love exploring cities like this where you don't already have the postcard image, you don't really know what to expect. You just turn up and blank slate and when you get fulfilled afterwards, that's what really makes traveling so special. Um, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you for watching this Ankara tour. I'm going to be filming another video here in Ankara tomorrow and how expensive things are. See you then. Subscribe if you want to see the trip around Turkey and follow me on Instagram for all the posts and stories. And you can also like my Facebook page if you want updates. And if you want to support me personally, you can uh, pledge to my Patreon account. If you do so, I'll be very grateful. See you then. Peace.